just a pretty interesting GitHub project I ran across. It's got the launcher for that lean back experience to where you can control everything with an Xbox 360 controller. Now I'm going to show you how to install it. Here we go. All right, so for the setup that I'm going to be demoing, we're going to be installing Cache OS for the base install. Mine has a USB Xbox controller set up. That's to pass it through for the virtual machine just for the demo. This does work Bluetooth with an Xbox controller. I have tried it on a mini PC, but just for this demo, I have it hooked up via USB. So we'll go ahead and get started. And I just have the latest ISO of Cache OS. All right, this is going to be pretty standard stuff. We're going to go ahead and launch the installer. Best practice is always to choose the Lamine bootloader. That gives you that rollback feature in case you have a bad update. I do believe that Grub does have something like that that they've updated recently in Cache OS, but I prefer the Lamine bootloader. Now for this demo, I am going to be using the, the GNOME desktop. This will probably work on the Plasma desktop. I just haven't tried it out. For this one, we're doing GNOME or GNOME. All right, and we'll go ahead and take the defaults here. And for this, let's call it Con Solo. It'll be our media PC <laughs> and give it a password. And we're going to tell it to go ahead and auto log in. This is where you go ahead and reboot and unplug your USB flash drive. All right, now that we're into the operating system, there's some prerequisites that we need to set up. Let's go ahead and head over to the Cache OS website and get the wiki. And definitely turn everything to dark mode. Okay, let's open up our terminal. We're going to install the Cache Gaming Meta. Now, if you're on a, a normal system that's just bare metal, not a virtual machine, you won't see these options. It should go ahead and auto detect your video card. And the next thing we're going to do, gaming applications. This is going to get the Heroic Launcher installed, Mango HUD, and a few others. And we're just going to take defaults on all these. All right, so that's installed. Let's get a couple of quality of life features installed as well. Let's go to our software center. And we are going to want to replace the GNOME software center with a ZAR. Bazaar is great for installing any kind of flat packs. It's so much faster than the GNOME Software Center and even the KDE Software Center. It's, it's so much faster. So a couple of flat packs that we're going to need that we're going to want is Cody. We want vacuum tube and flat seal if I can spell it right okay let's go ahead and open up flat seal Over on Cody, 
we're going to want to give it GPU acceleration, input devices, and Bluetooth. We're also going to want to give it access to our home directory. So let's give it tilde forward slash. And for vacuum tube, let's give it Bluetooth. That's going to give us access to our controller and GPU acceleration input devices. Okay, and next up, oh, one, one more thing we're gonna want from Bazaar. Let's get the extensions manager. This is gonna add support for GNOME plugins, plugins, extensions, and we're gonna want no overview. No overview at startup. So whenever you first boot into GNOME, it always gives you this crappy overview. And this extension right here, that gets rid of that. It just boots straight into it. And just for quality of life, let's get it a logo menu. This way, if you have to troubleshoot something and you just have a mouse hooked up, you can come over here and access your app grid or you could access your software center or whatever. Just easier to access as a HTTP setup. Okay, and the next thing is, let's go ahead and get Flex Launcher installed. I've custom done the configuration to where it will point back to the Flex Launcher folder under your home directory after we get it installed. It'll also have asset icons that I've made. I've made a few that aren't available from just the GitHub repo. I also made a, a neon icon pack in case you want that cyberpunk kind of look. Let's go ahead and get these installation commands done. So first, we're going to install the prerequisites for building. Then we're going to go ahead and clone it and build it from the GitHub repo for Flexit Launcher. The next thing we do is I've got my config file and my assets that I've created. We'll come over to our Flexit launcher and paste them into here. We're going to merge those and replace those. And just to demo it, we can go ahead and launch it right here. Boom. We got that. We'll go ahead and exit out. The next thing we want to do is make it an auto start feature. So I'm going to make a .desktop file, but we're also going to add it to our to our startup group. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and do a sudo reboot so we can make sure that launches whenever the system reboots. And there we go. Now I do want to make you aware that on the reboot, what I did cut out of this video is I did go ahead and sign into Steam and I launched Heroic Game Launcher one time just because it has a welcome screen on it. So yes, I did cut that out of the video just because username, passwords and all that. But let's go into Kodi. We got Xbox controller support right there. Got a vacuum tube. This has also got Xbox controller support. Steam. Okay, there we go. And exit Steam. Go into her heroic launcher. That works fine. Then we've got our system to where we can restart or shut down. Let's try out the neon icon pack. I actually haven't done that yet. I made the assets, but I never tried them out. So let's go back. And this is going to be part of the zip file. Let's take these neon icons. I'm just going to copy these. Let's go into our Flexit launcher. And let's go into our assets, our icons. We're going to overwrite these icons. Oh, 
Let's go ahead and just reboot. See how it comes up. Hey, that looks a lot cooler. At least it looks cooler to me. Nice. Really nice. All right, cool. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the Flexit Launcher. It's got that lean back experience. Uh, one project that is going to be coming out later this year that I'm looking forward to is going to be the KDE big screen or the plasma big screen. I watched an interview on Tech Over T with Brody talking to one of the one of the developers. I'm really looking forward to that. I'll do a video of the plasma big screen whenever it does release. It's waiting on KDE 6.5 to come out fully. So right now you really can't get your hands on it other than a very, very alpha build, which was not stable at all. And I couldn't even demo it barely. So I'm looking forward to that project later this year as well. And whenever I get my hands on it and get all the bugs worked out, I'll show it to you guys. That's it for this one. Have a good one. See you in the next one.